glad to be joined by our good friend, brand new freshman conservative congressman, Ken Buck. Ken, welcome to the morning show. Good morning, Randy. I'm not brand new. I've been doing this four weeks now. I, I, I know. You're in for a month. I, you know Jimmy Sangenberger. He fills in on the morning show. Uh, he works for me at my law firm. Good young activist. Posted up yesterday that Congressman Ken Buck will be joining Randy Corcoran on Wake Up tomorrow morning. And the first comment from somebody who will remain nameless was, Ugh, if Randy wanted to pick a rhino to talk to, he should have just gotten Boehner. And I thought, are are you kidding? And this is a guy I like, I know, I communicate with. I'm like, are you kidding me? The man has been in Congress for four weeks, and, and we're going to label him anything at all? It just, and I got to tell you, if, if, you know, Mitch McConnell or John Boehner or Paul Ryan or somebody wanted to come on the KLZ Morning Show, of course we would want to talk to those people. Isn't that what we need to do? Talk to each other, figure out the decision making, try and influence the debate, not just shooting off names and labels. I got to tell you, Randy, what's amazing to me is how little I didn't know when I was sitting in Washington or sitting in, in Colorado listening about what happens in Washington, D.C. It is absolute fascinating what is going on behind the scenes and and to try to label somebody i mean i'll give you a perfect example the dhs bill which i think we're going to uh, talk about the funding for the appropriations bill for homeland security um th- there was a part of me that wanted to vote for it there's a part of me that wanted to go to vote against it. i wanted to vote for it because it had in it uh provisions that defunded the president's executive order it also was a bill that funded a lot of things that um, you know, it, it was it was a large funding bill, and I am a fiscal conservative. I believe that we've got to reduce the size of, of government. We've got to get a balanced budget, and then we've got to get to a balanced budget. So what do you do? I, all I have is the choice of voting yes, no, or present. And in that case, I voted yes because I thought the, the, the president's uh, executive order was unconstitutional, and we needed to make sure we sent a loud and strong message. But there is no perfect bill where you can say my yes vote is a very clear uh, statement for conservatism. Let's talk a little bit about that. A lot of media is reporting on the fact that there are Democrats, Democrats who came out very loudly against Barack Obama's executive amnesty, but they're now standing in the way of moving this bill forward and putting it on the president's desk. Yeah, it's, it's, it is sad to me because what we're ultimately going to do, uh, if, if the Democrats in the United States Senate continue playing this game, is uh, we are going to threaten the, the safety and security of this country over the unconstitutional acts of the president. What they're saying is they would rather risk the, the security of our homeland rather than, um, uh, rather than pass a, 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 uh, a bill that limits uh, what the, the unconstitutional actions of the president. Uh, because we've funded, uh, in that appropriations bill, we have funded uh, what, what the president asked for, what the Senate wants to do. Uh, the only thing that's at, at, at issue now are these uh, unconstitutional actions of the president. And, and uh, it's just sad that the, the Democrats of the Senate are holding uh, this bill hostage. Well, and we know what the what is inevitably coming. This president is going to take the bully pulpit and he's going to say the Republicans are putting national security at risk. Republicans send me a clean DHS bill. The media is going to pick up with that message. This whole thing goes back to the Cromnibus and you weren't in office yet. Of course, the conservatives and the liberty movement went nuts when Cromnibus was passed. But the one hope, the one strength in the Cromnibus was that it gave this limited period of funding for the Department of Homeland Security so that this fight could be had now as funding is about to run out for the DHS. Are the Republicans talking to each other about a strategy to resist the media onslaught when the president takes the bully pulpit and says Republicans are endangering the nation? Absolutely. Uh, we are uh, doing our best to get on radio shows, to write it, and, and give interviews for newspapers and, and, and get that word out. The president feels so strongly about this, rescind the executive order. And let's move forward with, with a, uh, an appropriations bill that doesn't even have to address uh, those executive orders. But you're absolutely right. The Cromnibus was passed um, over objections because they wanted to fight at that point on, on uh, this DHS. And, and I, I think it's very clear. That that's what the fight is over, and, and the president uh, and the president picked this fight. You know, the the economy is is sluggish. The there are so many uh, problems that the president is facing. He would much rather 
uh, uh, fight on a, on a bright and shiny object over here than deal with the very tough issues that we have to deal with. This, this president has, has really uh, shown a huge disdain for his office and, and for our system of government. And it's, it's just terribly unfortunate. Well, the Democrats are starting the new message. You, you saw signs of it last night that the American people should relax about this, not terrorism, not radical Islamic violence, but, but these violent groups who are, are committing uh, serious crimes because they're far more likely to be killed by a lightning strike or in a car accident or with a in a heart attack with a heart attack in America than they are to be killed by a terrorist so don't don't look over here this is this isn't a big deal are republicans banding together to inform their constituents and educate the country to this growing threat on our homeland you know i have not heard uh other than what we've all seen on tv i have not heard uh, a huge effort we are going to take up the uh the, the uh, use of force uh request uh, by the president um I, I frankly uh have some reservations about that i've got to look at it very carefully uh to me that use of force request has got to be limited in time uh it has to be very specific uh, as, as to what uh, this president wants to accomplish, I want to make sure that we've got an exit strategy so we're we're not giving this president uh, a uh, an opportunity to uh, engage in uh, conflicts uh, anywhere he wants uh, in the world at any time. So I'm I'm going to be very interested in that. But in terms of messaging, I think it is a uh, a serious threat, um, and uh, obviously we've been under threat before 9/11 during 9/11. Uh, and, and we will uh, continue to, to face a serious uh, threat from terrorists, uh, and, and we, we've got to take it seriously. But uh, the, the particular issue of, of what's going on in the Middle East, uh, you know, if this president had acted responsibly and, uh, and, and continued to support the Iraqi uh, government and military and, and not uh, drawn down as fast as he did, uh, it's it's uh, questionable whether we'd be in this situation, right? Former Weld County District Attorney Ken Buck, now in Cory Gardner's old seat in Congress, newly elected to CD4. The party organizational meetings have been going on here in Colorado, and there seems to be a movement afoot to challenge the leadership of Ryan Call at the head of the Republican Party. In your own county, 13 of the 13 elected officials to the county and the bonus members have all come out in support of Steve House. Uh, people who are elected to Congress, people who are elected here in the state as Republicans, all have a vote at the Central Committee meeting. Have you had any time to think about this race, uh, this leadership uh, fight that's going on for control of the Republican Party here in the state of Colorado? Sure, I've had time to think about it, uh, Randy, and, and uh, you know, Cory Gardner um, is the uh, highest ranking Republican elected official in Colorado. He is supporting Ryan Call. Uh, Ryan, um, while uh, didn't was not very successful four years ago, was or two years ago was successful this last election in, in getting things done, and has agreed to step down after two years. Um, on the other hand, Steve House is is a good friend of mine. Uh, I respect the way he ran. Uh, the governor's race, and, and I thought he did uh, a good job and, and brings a lot to the job. Uh, at this point, I have uh, talked to both of them and, and not made a decision on uh, what I'm going to do. All right. Well, I want to encourage you to watch very carefully as much as you can from back in Washington. I know you get home periodically at the uh, the wave that's going on in these organizational meetings. In Arapaho, 15 of 23 people came out in favor of House in Denver 10 of 13. And Neil Matai is now the chairman of Adams County Republicans, 10 of 15, supporting Steve House. Uh, there are people who really feel like the Republican Party underperformed here in Colorado compared to the wave elections that went around the state. And, you know, maybe that's a conversation we can have another time. There's a whole month for this to play out. And I'm, I'm glad you're open to seeing how these things emerge and haven't made your decision yet. Um, this Republican Freedom Caucus, uh, when the uh, this thing was unrolled. There were nine conservative names on there, and people said, wait a minute, Ken Buck, our conservative new congressman, he's the president of the freshman class. He's going to be on all these great committees. Where is his name on the Republican Freedom Caucus? What's your position on the caucus, and uh, what's your involvement in it, if any? 
Yeah, I was uh, a member of the caucus before uh, the caucus was formed. Uh, I had had conversations with Jim Jordan and Mark Meadows and uh, others uh, before uh, I was elected in, in November, and I had started reaching out to various uh, freshmen uh, and uh, actually had contributed to some uh, of the, those uh, campaigns before uh, the elections in November. Uh, I, uh, after the election during orientation, I, I had meetings with various folks. This is something that it just didn't happen in, in the last couple of weeks. It, it is something that has been on the drawing board for a while. Um, and uh, I certainly have been working hard to work with the freshman class to make sure that uh, a number of freshmen uh, join uh, the Freedom Caucus. And I have been at all of its meetings and, and was uh, one of the, uh, as soon as uh, a, a sign-up sheet was passed around, uh, my name was, was on that sign-up sheet. So what they did was they talked about the nine people uh, that had worked together um, for the last couple of years before I got to Congress. They, those nine people were involved in the uh, activities around the Crown the Bus and, and other uh, important pieces of legislation. Um, and so they didn't include any freshman names on that. And I'm not sure if Dave Bratt's name was on that or not, but, but Dave is sort of one of those people. He got in uh, at the end of last session, and so uh, hard to identify which class he's in. But uh, so, yes, I am, I am part of the Freedom Caucus. I have been part of the uh, formation of that and, and uh, look forward to working closely with them. I, uh, it's great that you mentioned Dave Brad. At 7 o'clock on Tuesdays, we're joined by Christopher Doss, who was the mastermind behind the defeat of Eric Cantor and the election of Dave Bratt. They took down Eric Cantor, who, who ran an almost $10 million primary campaign with a little over $100,000. So the, the fact that liberty and principle can win even in big Republican establishment politics is something that really keeps us fired up. And uh, Ken, I appreciate you joining us for the show this morning. Uh, thanks for your direct answers to the questions. And uh, we're going to keep working on you with regard to Steve House. I appreciate it. You take right. care, Randy. Congressman Ken Buck on the KLZ Morning Show. When we come back, we...